What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at another video for you guys today. So somebody wanted me to check this video out. Uh, top 10 cold cases that were finally solved. I wonder what the hell is on this list. The thumbnail looks pretty creepy. So yeah, let's check it on out. I kind of wanted to be a detective, but I just wouldn't want to do nothing with no bodies. That's all I got to say. I, I just can't do it. Don't want. I like sleep. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to go to bed with no bodies and corpses on my mind. I'm just saying. But uh, let's check it on out, shall we? In about a three, two, one. Better late than never. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're Three counting down our picks for alive. the top 10 cold cases that were finally That's solved. Great. He then tied their the hands behind their backs and forced three of them into the back seat of the car. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most long-standing or infamous cold cases, which, years later, were finally solved by authorities. We'll be omitting serial killers and terrorists from this list, and are also going to hold off on including recent research into the disappearance of Amelia Earhart, she evil as her case still isn't 100% confirmed to be solved. Amelia Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan disappeared over the Pacific in 1937 while trying to circle the world. Neither they nor their aircraft were ever found. Number hmm. 10, Jessica Lynn Keen. Jessica Lynn Keen was a promising young student and cheerleader whose life was cut short in the spring of 1991. At first, investigators suspected Keen's then boyfriend, a young man who Keen's mother believed was a negative influence on her daughter's life. Uh, her grades started dropping and she had skipped school a couple times. I ain't saying nothing. Sean. 17 years later, an accused sexual predator named Marvin Smith was arrested by officials, thanks to DNA evidence linking him to Keen's rape and murder. Oh, Smith God. had been out on bail when he abducted Jessica, assaulted her, and eventually beat her to death with a tombstone when she attempted to escape through a cemetery. A tombstone. I, I can feel her heartbeat running through the cemetery. That's just I can crazy. feel the deep breathing she was probably doing when she knelt behind the tombstone. Number nine, Minnie and That's Edward sad. Maureen. Christmas is supposed to be a time of peace and goodwill towards our neighbors, but this tragically wasn't the case oh, for damn. Minnie and Ed Maureen, whose bodies were discovered back on Christmas Eve 1985. You know, most everybody was Jesus. trying to think the best, but figuring that the worst was about to come. The couple had been shot and then moved to a secluded area in the woods. Ow. Initially, police had their suspicions placed firmly on a pair of brothers, Rick and These John motherfuckers Rippa, look murderous. who they surmised I'm just had abducted the Maureens from their home at gunpoint, had driven to the local bank, and made them withdraw money. John Rippa and died you still had before to kill he brought to justice, you old but authorities eventually arrested Rick Rippa in 2012, over 30 years after the initial crime. I mean, his face has no I'm soul. No soul. And in my fondest memories. Eyes, ah, whatever. But without them here, the family hasn't been together again. Number eight, Diane Maxwell. Advances in forensic technology have done wonders for solving crimes previously thought to have gone cold. One such case was that of Diane Maxwell, a telephone operator who was taken from her workplace parking lot, raped, strangled, and stabbed to death by an unknown assailant. And he found this, this young sick. girl lying on her back with her hands tied behind her back, and he asked her if she'd been assaulted. She had said yes. This occurred back in 1969, yet it wasn't the until 2003, out years after the case was reopened, that a latent print technician for the FBI was able to match fingerprints taken from Maxwell's vehicle. The prints matched those of James Ray Davis, a convicted felon who had just left prison nine days prior to Diane's murder. James Ray Davis uh, spent the majority of his adult life incarcerated, auto theft, forgery, assault. Davis confessed and was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. Bye. Number seven. Richard Phillips and Milton Curtis. He was a little bit irritated and it was almost like, you're here for that? That happened so long ago. I can't believe you're here bothering me with that. Gerald Mason had become an average family man when he was convicted in 2003 for the 1957 murder of two California police officers. Mason Damn. was actually leaving the scene of another crime back when he was stopped for running a red light by officers Richard Phillips and Milton Curtis. Mason had attacked a pair of couples at a local lover's lane robbing them and raping one of the teenage girls. In a panic, he then shot both officers to death, out of fear that his earlier crime would be discovered. 
fingerprint what evidence and a scar here. on Mason's back from a bullet fired by Phillips eventually put him away for two consecutive life sentences. He traded the lives of two on-duty police officers to avoid capture. Number six, Roy McCaleb. Prison Wilson is now 71 years old. She admitted to killing Roy McCaleb 28 years ago. Carolyn Creason Wilson was a convicted bigamist who stuck to the same story for was she on 30 snap? years. I wonder. That a crazed barefoot man broke into the home she shared with her husband Roy McCaleb and shot him to death. This was in 1985, but it wasn't until 2013 that Wilson, now Damn. suffering from the early stages of dementia That's and a long Alzheimer's ass disease, time. Has been confessed free. to the killing. Wilson, who had been married a total of seven times, only received six months for the murder. But for McCaleb's remaining family, there was at least a semblance of closure six for their months. lost loved one. But Damn. some of her friends, oh, she couldn't do that. But she said, I did it now, and that's what we really wanted to hear. Number five, Susan Schwartz. The cards feature victims of open murder cases along with a police tip line. Our next cold case was actually solved by a set of playing cards, all emblazoned with the facts and figures behind some of the most long-standing unsolved murders. People crazy! These cold case cards led to a trip that closed the 1979 murder of Susan Schwartz, who was shot while taking a shower in her home. Gregory Johnson was arrested in 2011 for Schwartz's murder, with the motive being that he felt Schwartz, a friend of Johnson's abused wife, was interfering in his marriage. Johnson's wife, perhaps out of fear, kept his secret, but it eventually caught up to him, and he received a sentence of 24 years in prison. Susan was, was everything to me, that there had never been a, 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 a girl in the Swartz side of the family, and I got him, when, when she came along, she was, she was the greatest thing that was imaginable. Number four, John List's family. The popular television program, America's Most Wanted, has been responsible for bringing many criminals to justice over the years. Oh, One yeah. of these men was John I List, a shit. notorious New Jersey murderer who slaughtered his wife, mother, Whoa. and children in their home, and lived on the lam from 1971 to 1989. How did America's you do most that? Wanted. What the f Ask Frank Bender Bruh. to add 18 years to the face of John List. It was the recreation of the murders on America's Most Wanted that played a vital role in eventually bringing List, who had moved to Virginia and since remarried, to justice. He received five consecutive life Look sentences for first-degree murder and died of complications from pneumonia while in prison. I truly believe if it wasn't for Frank Bender, John List would still be at large. But finally, we brought John List to justice. Wow. Number three, Dalbert Apogian. It took over 70 years for the murder of seven-year-old Dalbert Apogian to be solved. I remember that movie. The young movie. boy's body was found floating in the San Diego Bay back in 1933, with multiple body parts missing. The Ooh, media at God. the time attributed the crime to, quote, a sex maniac, an opinion echoed by a local forensic pathologist. Police were inclined to believe testimony from one of Apogian's friends, who claimed that he accidentally drowned. The San Diego cold case squad made an official ruling in 2005, saying that Apogian's wounds were caused by oceanic crustaceans and fish, and were not premeditated. It was, after all, a horrible and tragic accident. Number two, Amanda Berry, Michelle Knight, and Georgina De Jesus. The most recent cold case on our list originally occurred back in the early 2000s, when Ariel Castro kidnapped three young women and held them prisoner in his Ohio home for over a decade. I think I remember decade. this case, yep. During this time, all three women were viciously beaten, tortured, and sexually assaulted by Castro, until, yep. finally, Amanda Berry was able to make contact with the outside world. I've been kidnapped, and I've been missing for 10 years, and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. Castro was arraigned on nearly a thousand separate counts, including rape, kidnapping, felonious assault, and more. He received a life sentence, but hung himself in prison only a month into serving his time. Mm. Knight has told police she was pregnant at least five times, but was starved and punched until she eventually miscarried. Number one, Aton Pates. Aton Pates was six years old in 1979 like that when he disappeared while walking to his school bus in Manhattan's Soho. Pates was declared legally dead in 2001, after all leads into his disappearance failed to land an indictment. The case was reopened in 2010, but Aton's family would have to wait until spring of 2012 to hear that Pedro Hernandez, who had worked at a local bodega in Aton's neighborhood,
confess to the crime. He went down to the floor. I put him in the bag. Mm -hmm. She was dead. Hernandez stated that he strangled the child and tossed his body in the garbage. This That's confession sad. was backed up by certain members of Hernandez's family, and he was sentenced to life in prison on April 18, 2017. The Page family has waited a long time, but we finally have found some measure of justice for our wonderful little boy, Eitan. Do you agree? Yeah, the only case I've heard on uh, that I know about on this uh, video was with the three women being held hostage in that sicko's house. You know, it's just it's just people are just crazy. Like seriously, like that other case with the guy he killed his own family, like his mom, I think they said, his wife, and his kids. And it's just like, what type of demonic ass, crazy ass, evil ass spirits that you have on you to do such something like that? Your mama, your wife, and then your kids. Like, dude, what the fudge is wrong with you? What is? Oh, Lord have mercy. I. Uh, Mm, 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 mm. But like seriously, I, I I hate hearing stories about kids being hurt or worse. Um, women, of course, you know, especially for you you sick ass men out there who don't value or respect women anyway. But that's for another conversation. Old people, because it's just like really, you rob, you make this this old couple go get some money out for you, and then you still have to kill them and go put their body somewhere. It's just like that was so fucking unnecessary. That's why y'all dumb as hell. That's why you end up going to jail any fucking way because you have to do the damn most. You could have just took the money and ran, but no, you had to fucking kill these this couple for what? Like, oh, oh, I can't, I can't, I cannot stand people. Like some people are just. Just throw them away. Like if there, if there is was supposed to be some type of alien invasion or some shit, take all y'all asses, all you crooked ass motherfuckers. Y'all go first. Bye bye. But nonetheless, this was a pretty cool video. Um, and that that last story with the little boy. That's just, it's just like you. The fact that you are putting all of this strength into killing a child into the dirty cells you go. Yeah, but nonetheless, this was an interesting video. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, comment below what you guys thought about these uh, cold cases, shall I say? Um, and what's some other, what's some cases that you guys heard about that disturbed your mind? Because there was a lot of them. It's been, a, it's been, a, it's been a lot over the years. It's been a lot, and still today, some world we live in, right? And uh, if there's anything else I can react to for you guys, let me know in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on my Instagram, and hit that notification bell so you guys don't have any way up below it. I said that the wrong way, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Taylor Rain, I'll see y'all in a minute. I'm out.